Okay, good evening. Back here again for Treasures of Truth Part 2 tonight, talking about yielding our rights. And uh, I just shared, uh, you know, for about a half an hour, a little bit more maybe, on uh, uh, we as Americans and, and uh, a real quickie about how our government was established. I realize that's a subject that college professors teach uh, uh, four and six and eight years on, and I tried to cover it as best as I could in 30 minutes, so please give me grace concerning that. But just to kind of establish within our minds um, the, 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 the conflict we have sometimes as we try to... Uh, the Bible says you can't serve two masters because you love the one and hate the other. You'll adhere to the one and, and uh, 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 resist the other. And so we've got to understand that uh, as believers sometimes, especially here in America... Uh, we have a government and we have a nation that was founded upon, uh, you know, biblical precedent in many ways, and uh, yet at the same time, things have evolved over the last couple hundred years, and, uh, uh, you know, the, our founding fathers made it very clear, I think it was Benjamin Franklin that says, uh, 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 someone asked him what type of government that they had given him, and he says, we've given you a republic, but it's up to you to keep it. And so, you know, there's a system that was set in place, but uh, God makes it very clear that when people's hearts have been liberated by the Holy Spirit, they're going to be much, they should be much more uh, submitted to self-government, government by the Holy Spirit in their lives, and they should be able to function together in unity and a purpose a, a lot easier than those who are still divided and separated by sin. But we don't live in paradise. We live in a we live in a fallen world today, in a fallen country, even though I'm very grateful I live in the country that I do, uh, there are still those issues at hand. So what I want to do now for part two of what I've talked about, yielding our rights, because my, you, you might have picked up my, uh, uh, an emphasis uh, in the first part about freedom and liberty and taking a stand and you know, resisting oppressive uh, 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 orders and edicts and so on and so forth. And uh, you know, I was just really sharing how our founding fathers set up our government and that, and that the First Amendment to the Constitution was really, that's what those 10 Bill of Rights, 10 amendments were about, was the, the rights that the individuals have in this country. And so uh, they are constantly being challenged when it comes to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And so what should we do? What should our response be? So, you know, our response, uh, what's going on in my heart at this time is it's time to get to back together again. Uh, you know, people can, uh, uh, people can gather together in Walmart. People can gather together in Wegmans uh, because it's been deemed that that's an essential environment. Uh, and they, you know, pretty well, when I go to those places, there's a general maintaining of order, a maintaining of distancing, and so on and so forth. Not everybody. I can't say that I've not bumped into somebody and that somebody hasn't bumped into me, uh, and so on and so forth. But we just realize that this is what life is all about. But, all, but we're being told now, but we, we're, not, we're not intelligent enough, or we're not submitted enough, or uh, we're not obedient enough to be able to come together in God's house and institute some of those same types of protocols that would keep our environment safe. And uh, uh, I believe that that's a violation of the Bill of Rights. I believe that's a violation of our Constitution. I believe that's a violation of the First Amendment of the Constitution. And therefore, in my mind, uh, uh, we, we have done what we could here to uh, work together. I understand when this disease, uh, this pandemic first came about, uh, that there was, you know, no one knew really anything that was going on, and there was really a need for us, we felt, to comply and go along with what was happening. But at this point in time, uh, 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 once again, based on government and law, uh, I believe that God is calling us to come out and to, uh, uh, to take a stand, okay? Even the scriptures say, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. But now I want to take a look from a kingdom perspective, and at this time I'm going to look at the kingdom of God. And uh, see, what has God called us to do as we, as we sometimes will resist, as we sometimes will take a stand? Does that mean that, let me say this, uh, there have been people and, 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 and kingdoms and groups that have taken a stand in the name of liberty or for liberty, for the purpose of liberty, and it may have even been a justifiable cause but they did it with a rebellious heart. And God is not about rebellion. 
And so there's more to the matter than just what we do, but there's what we do, there's why we do it, there's how I do it, that can take me from a point of justifiable action to sin in a few moments. And so I want to take a look also at what God has to say in His Word about rights and yielding of rights in particular, because these two messages that I'm sharing tonight, in principle, are going to be foundational to the to our approach to coming back together again beginning this Sunday and, uh, and, and the guidelines and the directives that will be involved that are going to require whoever comes here, again, sun, this Sunday, next Sunday, whatever, whoever comes here, whether we're outside or inside, whoever comes here and chooses to participate is going to have some guidelines that they're going to have to follow. So while you may have amened everything that I said a few minutes ago, the, what I say over the next few minutes, you might be saying, well, I don't feel like doing that. I don't know why I have to do that. Well, again, I'm trying to bring a balance into this topic and this matter of, of rights and, and having rights and yet yielding rights from time to time and so on. I shared the scripture from Philippians chapter 2, 1 through 8 about how God himself, in the person of Jesus, yielded his rights to be God. He never ceased to be God, but he yielded the rights of omniscience. He yielded the right of omnipresence. He yielded up those kinds of rights to come and to be confined to a human body so that he could accomplish a greater work that could not be accomplished as Father God of the universe, as God the Spirit. And so I want to talk about that in our life tonight too, but anyhow... Uh, the kingdom of God is a calling, okay? What are we called to in the kingdom? I want to look at three things here. The first thing, we're called to liberty. It is a call to liberty. Galatians 5.1, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and do not go back and return again to the yoke of bondage. So it's a call to liberty and freedom, liberty and freedom from sin. Thank God I don't live under the control of sin anymore. Thank God I don't live under the condemnation of sin anymore. Thank God I don't live under the judgment of sin anymore. But that doesn't mean that I cannot uh, still uh, sin. It doesn't mean that I can't choose to go back to or get involved in things that are of a nature that God would call sin. And the wages of sin is death. There's always going to be a consequence to it. So the Lord is, is saying to the, Paul was saying to the Galatians, you need to stand fast in the liberty that you have. You need to take the right stand. And that's not always getting your dukes up and fighting over it. Sometimes to take a stand, to walk in liberty, means you need to yield your rights in such a way that you continue to maintain liberty. It's second, it's a call to obedience. It's a call to obedience. Romans 13, 1 and 2, and I, I preached a, a month or two ago about, uh, uh, based on Romans chapter 13, and in verses 1 and 2, it says, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist, they are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. So the Bible says at the same time, and I spoke about that back then, about how we need to be submitted to governmental authority. But as I was praying about that this week, God reminded me of something we tend to think of, and I'm not saying he wasn't referring to governors and people here, because if you go on and read, he, he uses the word rulers more than once. So he was referring to people, but ultimately, and this really came to me as I was as I was studying the founding fathers and, and uh, you know, the formulation of our government, it wasn't about who's going to be the ruler. It was going to be about the laws involved. Rulers are going to change. You're going to have good rulers and bad rulers. You're going to have you know, young rulers and old rulers. You're going to have rulers who are going to change because people don't live forever, but laws are established over time, to, to exist over time. And so when I'm being told here to be subject to the governing authorities, the authority that governs us here in the United States is the Constitution. It's not necessarily an individual. Because the, uh, 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 the, the anti-federalists, the Jeffersons and Madisons of the group, they came along and they said that, uh, we, that, that these, this Bill of Rights is for us to... Uh, it's for us to take a, a stand, for us to be given the authority to take a stand against government when we believe that the, the rulers are governing or bringing control or oppression that is contrary to what? My opinion? That's contrary to my will? No, that's contrary to the Constitution. That's contrary to the laws of the land. 
And so therefore, I am commanded by God to be submitted to the gov- what governs the United States of America, the Constitution does. What governs me is the law itself. And so if I violate the law, I deserve to, be, to, to face the consequences. But if the government violates the law, for me to take a stand against the government or a governor in light of the law and what I believe the law says itself, then I'm submitting myself to that which I've been commanded to, which is the law that governs. Now, a good leader is going to lead according to the law. But our founding fathers realized that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes there are going to be those that will try to lead and rule outside the framework or within their personal interpretation of the Constitution. And I have the right and privilege as an individual in this nation, I have the right to look and say, I think you're misinterpreting that law. I think you're misrepresenting that law. And so therefore, I'm not going to do what you're requiring of me to do because that law tells me not to. That law tells me that I don't need to. That law tells me I have the freedom and right to make a different decision. And so therefore, it's not as simple as, oh, the president said it, I'm going to do it. Oh, the governor said it, I'm going to do it. Oh, so-and-so said it, I'm going to do it. We have been given the freedom and the rights within our Constitution to question authority and to even, as we said here, to petition for a governmental redress of grievances. And so we are called, though, to obedience, but I believe I'm called to be obedient to the law of the land. And then it's a call to yielding, and that's what I want to talk about now because the next things I'm going to say, you're probably going to say, whoa, 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 you're contradicting what you just said a minute ago. No, I'm not. It is a call to yielding our rights. God has also called us that there are times in life that the very rights that we've been given by God himself, these unalienable rights, rights that we've been given maybe even within the framework of our Constitution and our government, that God would say, um, in this situation, that is your right, and I will never take that right away from you, but I'm asking you right now to yield that right. I'm asking you to yield that right. I'm calling you to yield that. For 33 and a half years, Jesus yielded the right to be God as God the Father for the sake of the salvation of the human race. He didn't have to do it. He chose to do it. He didn't have... He, any time... The father never said, get back down there and get doing what I told you to do. Get up and get going, I'm telling you. Never. It was always on Jesus himself, the God man, as a man. It was upon him. The Bible says he could have called 10,000 angels at any time to defend him. It was, uh, he had to make the personal choice to yield the rights that he had as God. That's what, that's what Philippians 2, 1 through 8 is all about. He, had the per, he, he, he chose to make himself, I read that scripture, to make of himself of no reputation. And what I'm getting ready to share with you about yielding, these are responsibilities or um, opportunities that God gives us that we need to go to the next level of understanding the kingdom. We need to go to the next level of understanding our calling. We need to go to the next level of understanding what it means to have rights, but there's times when God would have us to yield those rights but it'll be up to you whether or not you yield that right. And I don't we believe we'll be judged if we don't yield the right. I believe that we'll miss the blessing that we could if we did yield the right. And here they are. Here's in three cases, and that's where I'm going to end it here for tonight. When is it that God will sometimes call us to yield our rights that we have? The first one is, is concerning His sovereign will in a situation. God's sovereign will. What is God's sovereign will? It's just God's will. Yeah, but didn't you tell me that I have this right? Absolutely. It's written down right in the Scripture. But I'm doing something right now in a particular situation with a particular person or people that if you're willing to surrender that right in this moment and at this time, I will use that surrendering of your rights. I will use that to touch a heart. I'll use that to open a door. And I'll use that so lives will be changed. Here's where we get that from. Luke 22, 41 and 42. Jesus again himself. It says, And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and he prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus chose to go to the cross and to put up with that 
all of the horrendous torture, persecution, suffering, and death, did he have to do that? No, he did not have to do that. He chose to lay down his life. He even struggled here down the last days of what was going to be taking place. Whether it was the pain, I doubt it. I believe it was because for the first time in eternity, he would, God the Father would turn his back. There would be a separation fellowship-wise between Jesus and the Father. But nonetheless, uh, he's the one that said, however, however, in this case, I have the right right now to just wipe out all of my enemies. I have the right right now to ascend uh, to heaven and be seated at the right hand of my Father, go right back where I came from. I have the right to do that, but I'm yielding my right as God. I'm yielding that right right now to the will of the Father. And I'm going to say, however, I'd prefer not to have to, I'd prefer to walk in this right that I have. However, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I yield my right, God the Father, to your will your greater will, your sovereign will for humanity and for my life. A call to yielding our rights. The second area that we're called in Scripture to yield our rights will happen sometimes when it concerns a weaker brother. A weaker brother, someone who's weaker in their faith. God says that he will call the stronger at times to yield a right that they possess, that they have. (coughs) Excuse me. But he will call them to yield that right. It's up to them whether they do it or not. God's not going to judge you if you don't because it's a right that he's given you. But he'll call us sometimes to yield a right for the benefit. Why am I doing this thing? I don't need to do this. I don't have to do this. It's not required for me for the benefit of a weaker brother. Let me read from Romans 14, 1 through 8. It says, Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. For one believes that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. Who are you to judge another's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord. He who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Really what's being said here is, there are times when people within the house of God will have, within the body of Christ at large, or even within the house of God, will have differing preferences, will have different convictions. They will base it upon what they believe is their right or the right thing to do in a given matter. And in some cases, these will be differing. They will be, a, even, maybe some case, even seem to be opposing one another. So what do I do in that case? Do I get an attitude? Do I get offended? Do I refuse to talk with that person? Do I go behind their back and say, well, you know, he's just a weak brother and, you know, that, that guy's just got problems because he, he, can't, uh, you know, he can't function, you know, without having such and such with him or maybe bring it up to today's activities or events. You know, I can't believe that those people over there, you know, still think they need to wear a mask around here. My gosh, there's no big deal and no situation going on around here. And I've been hanging around with people without a mask all this time. And now they, you know, choose to wear one. And, you know, this kind of stuff can come out of it because the devil wants to use it to bring division. The devil wants to use it to bring judgment and all those kinds of things. And the Lord says this, do you consider yourself Because maybe in both of those cases, the person who's doing what they're doing are considering themselves the stronger vessel. But he's saying, he doesn't say to the weaker vessel, he says to the stronger vessel, you know what? I think what I'd like to have you do today is to um, yield your right. Yield your right to have your own public opinion. Yield your right to be part of the majority. Yield your right to look this way rather than that way or say this rather than say that or to act this way rather than that way. I'm calling you to yield that right for the benefit of the weaker brother. Because in doing so, rather than him feeling 
ostracized or him feeling judged or him feeling like he's the only one. Not that you don't have the right to do what you're doing, and see, he certainly has the right to do what he's doing, but within the framework of it all, I'm looking for peace. I'm looking for caring about your brother. I don't know if you've ever been the one person or one of the two people in a group of 50 that didn't do what everybody else was doing. You didn't go along with the crowd. Your opinion was different than everybody else's. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that, but I'll tell you what, you, you, you feel sick to your stomach. You feel like, do I really even want to go there? You feel like, uh, you, feel like you know, maybe I'm not really part of this thing anyhow. And uh, everybody else is like over there. I mean, we're family. You may even, you may even be the proverbial black sheep of the family. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, comes along and, and uh, you know, you're, you're the one that's gotten in trouble all the time or you're the one that's always had this different view or you're in a conservative family and you've got a liberal point of view or the other way around. And uh, if you've ever been in that place or not, you know what it feels like to be there. And, and uh, you know, sometimes the, the multitude will take opportunity to try to pressure a little bit in there to bring about change and see if they can't get you to manipulate you a little bit and pressure you a little bit or whatever the way to make a change in your life. And I don't know, you know, Jesus was the one that, uh, he was the one that, I, I didn't see him going to a Pharisee's house too often in Eaton, but I saw him going to sinners' houses in Eaton. You know, I didn't see him, you know, cuddling up to a, a, a religious leader, but I see him cuddling up to a, a, a prostitute and a drunkard. Uh, why is that? Because he had a real heart and a real compassion for, 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 for those folks. And, uh, you know, what does God want us to do in situations? I, I've really been myself. I, I, I'm strong-willed. I, I've got, uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys like, uh, you can't tell me to do that. Why do you, oh, you think I got to do it that way? Well, let me show you how I can do it the other way. I'm that kind of a person, to be honest with you, deep down inside. But God's really been speaking to my heart about what, what about the other person? What do you think they feel like right now? And what could you do? Are there any rights that you could yield right now <clears throat> that would bring a blessing upon the other person. It, it, you're not yielding anything that's the end of the world. You're not giving up. You know, you're not be getting ready to go on a, a shoot in shoots and ladders and lose four you know, places in the game. It, it, it doesn't make any difference, really. Are you willing to, for the sake of the gospel, maybe for the sake of the kingdom, maybe for the sake of somebody looking and, 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 and getting a sense of, you know, the way he's acting toward me right now, boy, if that's, if that's how Jesus looks at me, I want that Jesus. I, 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 I want to I connect with that kind of a Jesus. I want to get a hold of him rather than, man, these people are supposed to be Christians. I, I don't even know if I, if I really want to uh, have anything to do with them. And it's simply because I wasn't willing to yield my right. I'm not talking about, you know, somebody asking you to go out and smoke pot or go out and, you know, drink a half a keg of beer with them or something. I'm not going to do that kind of a thing. But we're talking about something that is simply the yielding of a right that I've been given that God might be calling to me to do so for a weaker brother. Let me read Romans 14, 21 through 22. It says, it is, it is good neither to eat meat nor to drink wine nor to do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have, you, have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. I just want you to read some of these verses. and You need to get alone maybe and just sit and read some of these verses and meditate on them and say, God, what are you saying to me right now in light of what's happening and what we're doing and what God's calling us to do? Not just for the day we're living in today, but in a day that I believe is right around the corner that God is going to do some great things. But he's still preparing his vessel. He's still preparing his house to be a people who, 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 who have a balance in their lives concerning matters and issues like we're talking about here. And then the last one is, uh, when is it that God uh, may be uh, calling me to yield my right? Uh, the third one is for the world, for the world itself, for that sinner out there, for that, you know, that person who's just, uh, they're ungodly and they're, they're, you know, their mindset is, 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 is way out there someplace and they believe all this stuff and they're convinced of all that stuff and they're promoting things that they don't even know what they're talking about and uh, you know just certain things that can just drive you nuts sometimes. What about that person? Well, let me read a little bit more scripture since that's our governing document for the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. Paul says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself. There's that phrase again from Philippians 2. He made himself. I've made myself. I want you to know again, if I don't say it again, I want to say it again right now. This is something you will choose to do. 
Okay, this isn't something God's going to make you do. This isn't something I'm going to make you do. This isn't something the, the prophetic presbytery is going to make you to do. This is something you're going to get a personal conviction and you're going to make the choice that this is what I am going to do because I believe it is the right thing for me to do. Paul says, though, I, I'm free from all men. I'm free from all men. I've been made free by Jesus, but I've made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. And to the Jew, I became as a Jew, that I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law. Not being without law toward God, he says, but under the law toward Christ, that I might win those that are without the law. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that by all means some are saved. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker of it with you. This I do for the gospel's sake. Are there times that God will call us to forfeit or yield our particular individual rights for the sake of the gospel? For the sake of the gospel. You know, it can be simple things like, one of the things I, when I got saved and we were involved in, you know, the Jesus movement and all the things, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a three-piece suit guy, okay? <clears throat> now, for years, I, you know, I wear a tie because it's just like, that's what you did when you went to church, but I really didn't want to, and as time went by and things loosened up and, you know, people would come to church maybe with shorts and things on. I'm not talking about being immodest and I'm not, you know, talking about that kind of a thing, but... <clears throat> uh, even immodest though. So what if somebody comes in that's immodest or something? Do I kick them out of the church? Do we tell them they got to get out of here? So, you know, that kind of, I, I, I felt that was more my way of doing things. And so that was kind of a cool thing. And I was like, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I don't need to wear a tie now and I can wear my sneakers and stuff to church. But if I go to a place uh, you know, that doesn't do things that way. And I know those kind of churches. I know if I've been invited or asked to go. And when I say those kind of churches, I don't mean that they're backslidden churches. I know friends of mine that are full of the Holy Ghost and their ministry's doing great things, but that's how they dress. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear a suit, man. I'm going to wear what they're wearing. I'm not going to go in there and try to make a statement. Uh, but I have the right. I'm sure I wouldn't get kicked out. I might not be asked to come up and share a testimony, and maybe I still would. It's not the point. It's the point of having certain things that are, that are, that are not, as, they're not as relevant as we make them sometimes. And we, when we make secondary things primary, we really got to look at our heart and say, why am I making such a big deal out of this thing? You know, well, it's my right to be able to do that. Yeah, well, all right. I, I, I agree. It is your right, you know, whether you wear the mask or whether you don't. I understand that. But... What's going to be, what's God want us to do for maybe a bigger purpose? Have you ever thought about the purpose that God might want to bring us into that would minister to people who have a really strong conviction about that? And you might say, well, that's their conviction. That's not mine. I understand that. But when I'm in a certain setting, isn't there something God might have me do to try to connect with them rather than be the one that they look across the room and say, oh, there's one of those guys right there. You know, they can't, no matter what anybody says, they've got to do just the opposite. I, we, we really need to consider the way Jesus came. And again, I love the way Jesus, he ate with sinners. He, just nobody other than the religious folk really seemed to be bent on how he functioned because he was, he, he was full of compassion. Last verse, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 8, 4 through 9. <clears throat> Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other God but one. I mean, God is even coming up and saying, you know, this whole idol thing, I'm the only God there is. If they want to worship a flag or a, or a statue or something like that, don't get all bent out of shape over it. He's not real. There isn't a God there that they're serving. They're serving their own God. They're, they're, they're deceived. They're, they're messed up over the whole thing. But I don't need to come and be the crusader that has to you know, show them why that... He says, just, just realize that there's, there's no other God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live. However, this is very important, however, there is not in everyone that knowledge. 
maybe the freedom and liberty that you're walking in, that you look at it as a freedom, you thank God for that freedom, you thank God for that, for that uh, uh, national freedom, for that constitutional freedom, whatever it might be. But there's somebody else who doesn't understand that. They don't understand what freedom is really all about. They don't understand whom the sun sets free is free indeed. They don't understand the law of liberty. Uh, they, 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 you know, they see it as right, wrong, black, white. You've been told to do this and what you went and do that. They, they, they don't quite see it that way. He says here, you know, what I just said, there is not in everyone that knowledge. For some, with consciousness of the idol, until now they eat it as a thing offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. But food does not commend us to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we don't eat are we the better, or are we the worse. But beware lest somehow, here's how it ends here, but beware lest somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. This liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. Well, as I said to start out with, we are going to be having a service here in the parking lot this Sunday morning. Um, people will probably need to use the bathrooms. Um, there's going to be a drive-through um, lunch afterwards where people will be picking up their pre-put-together um, uh, lunch containers out, out at a table out, out, uh, out on the sidewalk. The swing sets are going to be zip-tied up. They're not going to be available for use. Um, and so I'm just giving you a few stipulations. If you come in the building to use the bathroom, you're going to need to have a mask on. Uh, people aren't going to stand in line to do that. They're going to be, you know, one person in the bathroom at a time. And so a few things that I just said over the last 60 seconds, some of you might be going, oh my gosh, that's not what I wanted to come back to. Well, it's up to you. I just want you to know that there's going to be some guidelines here because I believe that God wants us to be a testimony to our community people walking up and down this road, maybe a guest that might come in, that we're not coming back into a free-for-all free for mode. We're not coming back into where we left. I'm hoping to get there someday really soon. But in the meantime, there are going to be guidelines that I will send to you. If you are in my group texting, you will get them uh, by, by, by uh, sometime tomorrow. You'll get those guidelines for this Sunday outside. Then there'll be a set of guidelines that we will hand to you Sunday that will be for when we come back in here, and they will be even a little bit more extensive. There are going to be guidelines for the worship team, guidelines for the nursery, guidelines for the, uh, for the, for the, uh, the doorkeepers, uh, the ushers, uh, guidelines for all of us. And that's the way we're going to function for a little while. We're going to yield our rights or our freedoms that we think we have uh, to just do whatever we want to do, whenever we want to do it, however we want to do it. And we have a plan because we have been, we've been uh, 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 instructed by the governing authorities here to have a plan of how we're going to do things. And I don't see anything, I don't see that violating my First Amendment rights. Not being able to gather together, that's one thing. Telling us that there are some wise things to do to gather together and it's safer that way, that's another thing. So here's where we've got to deal with each individual situation individually. So I'm just letting you know that ahead of time. There'll be those kinds of things. And if you're not into adhering to that, I got no problem with that. You're not going to be judged. You're not going to be, where were you? Anything like that. Uh, just don't come. That's all. Because it will be that kind of a thing and there will be no exceptions to what we're going to do. Um, if you have any questions, you know LCF at gmail.com. And uh, most of you have my phone number, too, if you need to get a hold of me to find that out. But uh, please be patient and wait, because I'm going to send the guidelines your way. So they'll be forthcoming. Again, Sunday, 1030, drive-in service. Uh, food orders. If you want to have one of the lunches, whether it's uh, we, we have adult and children's uh, 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 packages, kind of like a Happy Meal, all right? Um, the food orders need to be made to Christy Lee Davis in advance. 315-224-2452. You need to contact her uh, really soon and let her know that you'd like one, two, five, six, whatever they are. They're not for sale. We're not, it isn't going to cost you anything. We just need to know uh, what, uh, what you would prefer. Guidelines for future gatherings will be available this Sunday. I said that. Wednesday, June 3rd. That's next Wednesday. As of next week, we're not going to be continuing in Treasures of Truth three nights a week. 
We're going to be going into Wednesday, next Wednesday, 3rd of June. We're going to be going back into our small group uh, gatherings that we had begun just before the corona crisis. Young wives meeting at 7 p.m. at our house. Young wives meeting 7 p.m. at our house. Get a hold of Pastor Penny if you want to find out anything more about that. You know the books that you were looking at and so on and so forth. And then, uh, as I said, Treasures of Truth, I'm going to begin the Gems from James. Uh, I'm not certain right now what night we will be putting them out, probably Tuesday or Thursday, uh, but just again, trying to let you know just a handful of things in advance. So praise the Lord. Thank you for sticking with me for a double session tonight, uh, but it was important to me to try to lay some uh, groundwork down for this next phase that we are coming into as a church. So I want to close in prayer and uh, 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 just look forward to seeing everybody this weekend if you can make it. Also, there will be a parking lot. There will be a parking order in the parking lot and you'll need to adhere to uh, the parking lot attendance uh, because we have a certain order that we're doing things in for maximized observation and for maintaining a level of social distancing. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I do thank you for uh, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you've given us, Lord, a standard to go by by which we judge ourselves. Judge, don't judge somebody else. Judge yourself, you said. You said, hey, hey, get the lumber out of your own eye before you try to deal with the speck in somebody else's. So, Lord, thank you for that. Lord, I ask that you'd speak to each one of us concerning our heart, our motives, our intentions, and our willingness to yield our rights, Lord God. Our willingness to stand on our rights and yet our willingness also to yield our rights when called upon by, the, by you, the Lord. And so, Lord, I thank you for that, and I just pray that you would cause our times, people's times in their home, and our time together to be blessed by you, and I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you Sunday, I hope.